Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Man Watch Required, the podcast that tries to shed some light on the uh, inspection industry, trying to make it entertaining and informative at the same time. Now that uh, everyone's all certified after listening to the last episode on certs, you're probably wondering what a claw job is. Well, stay tuned and maybe you'll find out. Scott, here we are. Frank, we're back. Tenth episode, been gone a little while. I think we missed like two upload cycles almost, hey? Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. I think our uh, five or six listeners might have dropped off. <laughs> a couple people uh, noticed, I'm sure, but uh, thank you. We've been getting some great feedback on the podcast. Uh, we are kind of out working some jobs and uh, work life kind of got in the way of doing the podcast. As This is kind of a hobby still, so... We know we got to take the priorities and make them work, I guess. Yeah, yeah, life gets in the way sometimes, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's good to have some uh, feedback, either positive or negative. It's all been positive so far, but just, just anything, right? Instead of uh, just silence, now we know people are actually listening. So that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been pretty neat. It's pretty neat to see uh, what people have to say and reactions to the last few episodes so thanks for listening again and uh, definitely tell your friends subscribe scott i guess we'll start the episode uh talking about what we've been up to in the last little bit uh yeah update the listeners maybe it seems like we've been off the air for a while so uh see yeah. what kind of excuse we have <laughs> yeah we we had a couple busy uh turnarounds to work uh, as you guys probably know from all the turnaround talk and stuff from the previous episodes but we tried to record as many episodes before we got into the turnaround months here and we failed miserably and we we missed a couple <laughs> but we got most of them down and and out to you guys to listen to some Scott, what do you think? Uh, any highlights from the last couple of turnarounds we worked? We actually had the opportunity to work two turnarounds back to back together. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of nice. Um, <laughs> even the one, the couple episodes we we did on turnarounds, that was leading into a, the one that we were working together. So that one was kind of no surprise. And then, and then uh, we jumped on to another one right after that. Not really surprisingly, but a little more short notice than we'd normally have. And we both ended up on it on the same shift. So that was kind of nice. Got to work in Saskatchewan, see what that's all about. Land of the big sky, right? Yeah, yeah something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. no, that was fun. Uh, yeah, it's been a busy, it, it's been a different year with uh, essentially no spring turnarounds or not too many, at least for the ones we ended up on. It's kind of a busy summer right into the fall and into the late fall type of thing where it's usually, you know, quieter summer and, and busy in the fall. So it's kind of a extended, no turnaround season in the spring, but like a really extended, you know, summer slash fall one. So it's been a busy couple months, really. Yeah, I think a lot of people listening can relate to like totally messed up our summer and then mostly fall if you like getting out there and enjoying the outdoors and stuff like that, like... You spent it working 12s, I guess, which isn't a bad thing because you're working. But at the same yeah. time, all those wonderful summer days just slip away like nothing. Oh, yeah. Our short summers. <laughs> short summers. <laughs> they are. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're working. It seems like you wouldn't even have one. Yeah. So um, last episode, like Scott alluded to uh, earlier here, was all about uh, certifications and stuff like that. So if you were interested on possible what certifications to get and uh, maybe a path to get them or maybe a specific path to kind of take to gain knowledge on your quest for obtaining certifications. That's kind of what it was. So we figured naturally we should jump into uh, assuming you're certified now, what kind of jobs you can get on. I know we've alluded to uh, claw jobs a lot uh, <laughs> and it's kind of been a little bit of a joke, but Scott, would you like to allude to what claw jobs are? <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's, it's something we mentioned, uh, I think on a few episodes, and I don't know if it started out as a joke, but it's kind of a name that's stuck now, and I think other people even refer to them um, like that too. Uh, <laughs> where the name comes from, I guess, is just um, like one of those claw machines where you're trying to get the, <laughs> the, the teddy bear or the candy or whatever they have in there. Um, so essentially you're in a room with a bunch of inspectors and the, the, the coordinator or the foreman or whatever want to call them calls upon you. It's basically the claw reaching in there and grabbing you and plucking you out so um <laughs> I, I think we'll get into um i'd like to say different levels of 
claw job, if you will, where the, there's the one extreme where you are just, you're like the GoPro guy, right? You just go in, you do your visual, you write the report, you don't know anything about the history and you don't have any follow-up. And then there's, I think we'll maybe lead into more like an embedded type of role where you're really involved. You're essentially a, like another staff person. You just paid a little differently, but uh, you're essentially doing all the same things that they are. So maybe we'll kind of start with... Um, the extreme claw. Um, Should we? Your, yeah. So sorry, sorry. Should we allude to like how we get onto claw jobs first? Or are we going to include that later? We we actually don't have that written down on the board. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, yeah, let's let's jump into that. It's uh, what do you have to say? You seem like you're in, <laughs> I don't really itching to say something. If you're if you're wondering how to be so lucky as to be chosen by the claw. <laughs> um, uh, normally, I think, you know, there's a lot of big uh, NDE companies out there who are who are always looking for bodies and stuff like that. And even some of the, the smaller ones who just need to kind of man up for a specific job, you know, they'll, they'll put calls out. You'll see them on Indeed or wherever other job posting websites there, you know, 510, 570 inspector wanted. Uh, they might throw a couple NDE certs under there as a bonus if you, if you have them show up, mm-hmm. bring your boots and your lunch pail and they'll give you everything else you need to go, right? So just kind of, if you are looking for a job and you kind of just want to get some nitty and gritty experience, you know, these kind of jobs are there and you learn fast and hard, I guess, would be another kind of caveat to put on here. Yeah, there's good and bad to those jobs. And then I, I guess as you get more experience, those jobs are all about networking too. And yeah. and no different than a embedded type of job. That's a networking type of thing you'd lead into as eventually too um like the job we just did in saskatchewan there i think i i knew or worked with uh, almost everybody on that site even actually like half of them we had all worked together like a couple of years ago all in the same crew so it's uh it's somewhat of a small world and you know everybody kind of networks together so that was that kind of made that one fun yeah it was actually a really pleasant surprise uh aside you know scott and i just thought we'd know each other there but when we got there, it was uh, a big, happy family and everyone, it was a great time actually. Yeah. 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 There was like, you know, one or two other guys I knew that were going or thought were going, but I, I didn't expect to know, you know, the whole trailer full of guys. So that was, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. No, that was a good time. So yeah, definitely Scott brought up a good point is networking. So, you know, don't lose your cool on the job, you know, be friendly, be kind to people. Cause you never know, especially in inspection, it's actually a fairly small world mm-hmm. and you run into the same faces all the time. So I guess kind of be courteous and hold your tongue sometimes if you need to. Yeah. I mean, doing a good job gets you another job, but I mean, doing a bad job, you know, that'll uh, get you off some lists too, right? You know, those same people come around and if your your name gets remembered enough too many times for bad reasons that that can get you off a list too right so <laughs> it goes both ways yeah no it definitely does okay so back on track sorry scott i kind of threw you off there um different i guess levels of claw jobs and what we mean by levels would kind of kind of go by your roles and re- your responsibilities kind of or expectations for the job uh scott alluded to there might be some jobs or we kind of you know lean towards, you know, there might be jobs where they just want warm bodies there to fill seats. And then when your number is called or when the claw comes to pick you, <laughs> you get dropped into the plant with a permit and you got to go crawl through a, a drum or a vessel or a column or something like that and, and kind of do it blindly almost and kind of go from there. Yeah, that that's it. Like the, uh, the only history you have on that vessel is the, the permit, the coordinator hands <laughs> you with the equipment number and, oh, okay, now I can find this thing. And, um, I'm not a, a, I don't think that's the best way to do a job, but I mean, that, that is how a lot of them are done. Uh, typically the, the shorter, um, shorter windows with a lot of inspections type of jobs are done that way. Um, you know, the staff people not know their history and everything, and, and I'm sure they do, uh, whatever they do with it after and, and it's fine. But, um, yeah, that, that's the it, kind of the extreme claw where you're, yeah, you don't know anything about it. You don't really know any of the scope until you, know, you're, you're, the chosen one and you go out there and <laughs> and usually your scope's a visual and you, you don't even know what the NDE scope is. There, there's likely some, but you're, you know, you're not coordinating it. You're not involved in it. You're not handling the reports, nothing. You're, you're just the visual guy and, you know, go do it, write your report, sit down, wait for your next one. Yeah. Yeah. That can, those jobs can actually be a little frustrating for myself personally. Cause I, <laughs> I, uh, 
invest heavily into the job or work scope, I guess uh, <laughs> I could say lately. <laughs> but, you know, I, I really like to take ownership of stuff and kind of figure out what's happening, what's happened to the vessel before and, and where it's going to, what my inspection is going to produce, right? Even if we do, I like to be involved in the NDE and, and see it, see kind of like the whole thing through, like the whole process through, I guess, and kind of feel good about signing it off. Sometimes claw jobs, you don't get that, which some guys like and, I'm not also going to lie. Sometimes it's nice to just show up, do a quick inspection and write a report and then, you know. Yeah, they, they are a nice little treat sometimes. Yeah. Um, like we had a good example this this fall, summer, fall, uh, you know, strange season we had here where we were, you know, we we're on the opposite end where we we're heavily involved in everything for the for the one turnaround. And then yeah. and then the other one, it was, you know, it wasn't the, the super extreme end of the claw jobs, but it was pretty close. And it was, um, I know it, it took you a bit of getting used to, but uh, it, it was kind of a nice little, uh, I don't want to say vacation because they're still, you know, working and getting paid for it. But it, it was kind of a nice little treat where you're, uh, you know, you're, you're just doing your inspection thing. And you're not, you're not really worrying about everything else too much. I think we're still involved with the NDE people and that. So there, there's, there's a little pull there, but it was um, nothing like the one we did before. It was, it was a lot more relaxed as far as our responsibility. So it, it was kind of nice. Yeah, it definitely was kind of nice. Um, but not having that level of involvement definitely <laughs> did get to me a little bit. Not that I needed to control or, or have ownership of everything. It was just, I wanted to know when I was needed and, and be there and not be that wink, weak link in the chain in the yeah. progression of the vessel during the turnaround, right? It was, I had a tough time kind of pinning down when I needed to be at certain spots, which I don't want to make it sound negative. Like everything got completed <laughs> and everything, but it was just, it like Scott said, it took me a little bit of getting used to because I had been in in a in a embedded position, which we'll touch on in a bit for quite a while and, and was used to having a lot of ownership over stuff. So, yeah. And it's, it's tough. You don't, you don't want to be the hold up, and it, it's hard not to be when you, you have little to no involvement there and you're just, you're just waiting on that call and like you, you have your radio down too low or something and that's it. You, you blew it. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's that it happens that quick. Right. So yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of tough on that aspect, but I mean, there's good things about it too. I mean, if you happen to get on one of these as a newer inspector, um, it, it provided there's enough manpower and everybody's not super busy all the time, um, it can be good opportunities to kind of learn, uh, especially some equipment maybe you're not really comfortable with, where you can you can tag along with a more senior guy and kind of go through something like that. So there, there's good and bad to these claw jobs. Um, it just depends on how you look at it and, and how they're laid out. Yeah, they're actually also pretty good opportunities to um learn because uh you do get in stuff quick dirty you do your inspection and you write your report so it helps you kind of streamline streamline that process for yourself and kind of get organized you have to be organized but also uh, one thing i noticed was a lot of the guys sadly scott and i didn't do this i don't think he'd want to do it with me anyway but a lot of the guys partnered up and they execute executed inspections together and that really mm -hmm. that you know, you also, for somebody new, you're going to learn off somebody who has more experience and hopefully someone who does it, who does things right. But also, you know, like we talked about doing, uh, when we talked about our report writing and inspections, like you have somebody else there to quickly bounce ideas off of or validate something which you, you see and somebody else is there to be like, yeah, that is kind of weird or yeah, that does kind of look like that. You know, a lot of guys buddy up and it's a good opportunity to kind of learn off each other, especially to... Two people who one person has experience and one doesn't have experience or two people who have complementary experiences where you can kind of feed mm -hmm. off each other and learn. Yeah, no, that, that is a good point. And it, it can be good opportunities for those, especially, I mean, smaller equipment and that just, it doesn't work space wise as well. But <laughs> yeah, things like towers, especially bigger ones that have, you know, two or more manways, um, those are just so much easier to do with two people. Uh, you can just, instead, you're not going up and down so much. And, and it, yeah, it is a good opportunity. Like if you're given a, you know, a lot of time to do the inspection and you do have a newer person, um, like a, a tower with the, with two manways is, is a great opportunity because you can each go down a side, then you can even switch and go back up if you want. And then, you know, the more senior guy gets a look at both, make sure nothing is missed. And then if something was found, it can be pointed out and the, the more junior inspector can have a look at it when you go back up that type of thing. Right. Just, uh. 
something I just thought of. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. Typically when I take a new inspector in though, uh, or like an engineer, they'll always find something before me and it just totally <laughs> chaps me. Like it totally yeah. like, oh, I should have went and looked at that site first. Oh, yeah, I knew that was there. Yeah. I was leaving it for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it's good because they find it and you kind of show them the process to go through. Okay, now that you've identified something, like now what do we do about it? Let's, this is the next step. This is how we handle it. So it's good. And it's, it is fun to watch somebody kind of discover something for the first time, right? <laughs> yeah, so, for sure. It's like, you know. like uh, just... Uh, Christmas morning or something, I guess, finding that present that you're waiting for. Yeah, you know, aside <laughs> aside from finding, like, pitting and stuff, but, like, when you find, like, a, a blatant crack or something, sure, you know, it is kind of exciting. And even when uh, internals are deformed and stuff like that, like, it's pretty neat because even just the sheer amount of force that caused those internals, like, to get deformed or crumpled up, takes quite a bit it's pretty impressive yeah even like some of that process engineering stuff that we're not you know always as concerned with but yeah that's the stuff that gets trashed a lot of the times and it's, it's kind of cool to see yeah yeah no it's pretty fun <laughs> i always know you're gonna have a good inspection when you like poke your head in the bottom man way and there's a pile of trays oh yeah that's yeah. the best <laughs> <laughs> yes got yeah. a good one <laughs> yeah so um next kind of thing is uh with these claw jobs is sometimes like on the extreme end you'll have limited involvement uh kind of like with the nde crews you kind of you might just get reports and you may not be able to talk to them you'll have limited involvement with uh the trades uh maybe the uh trades qc uh for the reporting and even uh even the internal company updates which typically on these jobs would be handled by the unit inspectors right yeah, like whatever kind of IMS program they're running, you're you're not likely going to have anything to do with that. You're, you're not even going to know what they're operating probably unless you've worked there as an embedded guy or something like that. But even yeah. even the planning and stuff that goes into it, you're going to have nothing to do with that. You're likely going to come in. I've been on the, a, a few extreme claw jobs. I like to sneak them in once in a while. And it's, um, <laughs> <laughs> you go in and it's usually a, a quick in dock, like um, four hours type of thing. It's usually on a smaller facility where it's not, not a big drawn out mm -hmm. uh, orientation type of thing. So you get in there and it's, um, you know, just about noon or so, let's say halfway through your day. And uh, as soon as you get to that trailer, it's like, hey, boots on. We, we got this one ready for you. Like, what? I don't even know which way north is. <laughs> no, it must be. Wow. Hey. Oh, yeah. Th those ones are good. So it's, yeah. Uh, where was it going with that? Getting back to the planning aspect of it. Yeah. You have no involvement in that. So there's no, um, there's no history available for you. You definitely didn't put it together. You didn't put the scope together. All you know is um, the coordinator grabs you and says, we need a 510 inspection. Oh, okay. That's, that's it. Um, this is the equipment number. Do you have a drawing? Nope. It's over there somewhere. Go find it. Do the inspection, write the report. So, yeah. Uh, maybe one thing to say, like, even though it's really good to know damage mechanisms and like causes and stuff like that, at the end of the day, like one of my old mentors, like who was a good inspector, he just didn't have, didn't care to have process knowledge. He goes, it's steel. It's going to be damaged or it's not damaged. There's a minimum thickness and the thickness it was brand new. It's just, you got to work it all out. And if it's going to get damaged, it's damaged. And if it's cracked, you repair it. He does a lot of claw jobs, I guess. <laughs> uh, he was salty as hell. It was <laughs> working with him was such a pleasure. Like it was one of my favorite guys to work with. But it was just <laughs> the driest sense of humor. And it, like he always was teaching you stuff. So it was really good. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one way to look at it. And a lot of people have that opinion. And it, I mean, that, that's fine, I guess. Like, you're not going to go too wrong with that. But I mean, to get the the best and most optimal inspection, you you should know the process conditions and, and even the operating history and, you know, just some of the inspection history. Like, that, that's all laid out in code and recommended practice, too, that that's all part of the inspection too, right? So to, I don't know, that's why I have a hard time when that gets all disregarded. But at the same time, you're, you're paid to be there, to be the GoPro, to, to go through it and to write the report and, and to keep your mouth shut after that. So, I mean, that's what they want you to do. That's what you're there to do. Yeah. And I guess don't be shy. And if you do come into contact or even ask your coordinator, you know, can I get a previous inspection report or something like kind of ask for these documents and, if they're not available to you, my personal opinion would be put that in the report. Like no previous history was provided. Uh, API internal completed 
you know, either as found or after cleaning and then list what you found, kind of go through your, your report. Yeah. Just cover yourself. And just to clarify, we're like these places don't, that's not the end of the road. Like the, the the unit inspectors that work there full time, like they, they put a lot of time into planning this. They know the history. They'll, they'll take that report and they'll, they'll input the data that they need. They'll update their IMS systems and whatever they use. So that, that's all happening in the background. It's just when you're when you're in the cage and in on the claw, um, you're just not involved in that. That's all. It's it, it is happening, and you just have nothing to do with it. Yeah, and actually, something popped into my head that happened to me on the last job we were on. Just verify that your drawings. Every vessel I got, <laughs> the drawings were wrong for it, or it had multiple half drawings for it that were you know, fun to put piece together to kind of get the inspection done. So actually a recommendation, something that I did was I took one of the GAs and kind of remarked it up. So they had kind of like, at least for the next inspection that was in my report and the next inspector going in would be like, Oh, okay. They removed these level of trays or they added a nozzle here, or these nozzles are in this orientation and not as, as shown on the drawing. So kind of, Make life easier for yourself, but maybe for the unit inspector, which adds a little bit of value. Not that, well, yeah, you do. You want to do a good job. And then even for the next guy, and it might be you coming back the next the next time that gets that vessel again, and you'd be happy you did that work. Yeah, I was going to say, I hope you kept a copy of that because you know they're not updating that drawing <laughs> yeah. for the next four years. Not a chance. <laughs> Straight to the recycle bin. Yeah. So. Uh, what else do we got here? Um that's kind of it. Um, yeah, we had like, uh, we, t- we touched on the trades and just kind of rattle off some things there. But like even the, when you do find some repairs and there, there's obviously contractors there to do the repair work and a QC team and all that stuff. But the, this is one of the things that uh, bothers me the most about the claw jobs is just, um, especially the, the extreme end ones. Um, you don't get any involvement in the repair scope and that's the best part. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fun to find the damage, but it's fun to um, put together a plan, um, how you're going to fix this, talk with the repair contractor, get their input, you know, if it's welding, see, see what kind of uh, welding procedures they have, you know, put that all together, postal heat treat, things like that, mm-hmm. um, see it all through, you know, hydro test the equipment if, if that's necessary. You know, and, and then uh, the turnover package, documentation, all that good stuff. So that that's all like um, stuff I enjoy doing as well where when you're on the the claw job you just don't have anything to do with that when when the repairs do come up it's usually the um you know the staff uh, unit inspectors that the guys in the background doing all the all the stuff that we don't get to do they'll, they'll kind of take that on as well too so that's another kind of unfortunate thing where you, you miss out on those um but i guess when you're when you're new and just getting into it it's kind of nice because it's not too many things to have to worry about but that's kind of another uh, aspect of the the claw job is you're you're not likely going to be involved in repairs at all. You might find them, report them, and that's it. You have no idea if they even fixed it. They, they likely did. You just you're not involved in it. Yeah, I definitely struggle with that. But usually the process is that like you'll do your inspection. There'll be some sort of um, deficiency report or something that you fill out that goes to either the unit inspectors or the engineering department. They assess it if it needs to be repaired or not. And then, like Scott said, they'll issue the repair scope to the contractor who's conducting the repair, and you most likely won't have anything to do with it, which may be good or be bad, but usually that's all the fun stuff. Like, you get to see the excavations, you you verify that it's out, you monitor them when they weld it, weld build, weld build it back up. So, you know, it's it really gives you a kind of satisfaction that you completed the job. You've Mm -hmm. inspected it, you repaired it. That manway's buttoned up. That's fun. Let's move on to the next one. Um, Go ahead. (laughs) Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just going to add to that. Like, it's just kind of nice, the whole process. Like, you go in, you find something, you come up with a plan, the repair contractor fixes it, you inspect it, you sign off the documentation. It's just a whole nice circle. Close the manway and it's just... It's like a <laughs> sense of accomplishment instead of just having like one little piece of that pie. Yeah. Um, maybe one quick thing that I feel like we're jumping like, oh, one more thing, one more thing. But uh, <laughs> if you are working a claw job and you are going to 
submit some sort of deficiency report or recommendation for repair, make sure you have information to back that up. Did you do UT thickness readings in those locations? Did you request uh, LPI or MAG on a specific location where you suspected something? Uh, is there any other things that you could do? Like, could you assess it? I know we've talked about external UT grids on found corrosion, stuff like that. Just keep all that kind of stuff in mind. And then when you submit that deficiency report to whoever needs to see it, they have as much information as they need to make a proper decision. Because if you give them a half story or an incomplete story, they might recommend a repair that won't be sufficient or it'll be inadequate, I guess. Yeah, or, or they'll disregard it because there's not enough yeah, uh, yeah, not enough information there. They're just not going to buy into it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully they would maybe go in and look at it themselves if, if, the, if that's the case. But... Yeah, I mean, you want to <laughs> you want to have a recommendation there. You want to have um, some evidence to back it up too, right? And you yeah. know things like pitting and that. Put depths, right? Don't just say it's it's there's some pitting here, some pitting there. It's scattered pitting. Uh, that doesn't do anybody any good. Um, I don't think we'll go too too much more into that. I think we've talked about reporting and how, how that goes on the previous episode and maybe we'll bring that to life in another one but yeah just some little side nuggets there <laughs> yeah i don't know how much we could talk about reporting before people <laughs> stop listening so best for quick and dirty jobs claw jobs is is kind of what you want i don't want to say it's really fast money or quick money but like they usually pay pretty decently you're gonna go in walk out with a bag of cash do the best job that you can now Kind of, I don't want to say the holy grail, but uh, <laughs> this should be good. <laughs> the job that that is desirable, especially amongst contract inspectors, would be some sort of type. Uh, is the next type of position you could get with your CERTs is an, an embedded position where you're close to home. Uh, maybe there's a refinery and or uh, some sort of facility. It doesn't have to be a refinery, but some sort of facility that requires pressure equipment inspection close to your house or in the city where you don't have to do a camp job or something like that. It's your embedded positions, right? <laughs> I don't know about Holy Grail. I think that just, uh, <laughs> that depends on the, the individual and, and you know what they like to do. Um, I mean, there's, there's negatives with that too, right? It's your, and then this all depends on, on, on what you're after and what your, where your interests lie. I mean, it's a lot of, it's a lot of 40 hours, it's a lot more computer time, not, not as much hands on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more, um, it's, a, I won't, I don't want to say secure because nothing's really too secure in this industry, but it's a lot more, um, you have more of a farther look ahead. Usually those jobs are like a year, two year at a time type of thing. Yeah. So that, that's kind of nice as a contractor, you can, okay, I'm going to make this amount of money for this amount of time so that that helps that's kind of nice um one drawback to doing um those jobs for too long is you you lose the networking a little bit for the turnarounds so it's i mean there's pros and cons to both and it just depends where your interests lie um you don't run into the repairs quite as often other than you know maintenance stuff but you're not like with the turnarounds we're running into like miles and miles of repairs um so it's just a little bit different uh, atmosphere i guess Way to smack down my holy grail. <laughs> I wasn't smacking it down, no, but no. Uh, holy grail, I think, is a little little much. Claw jobs are pretty good, too, sometimes. <laughs> you just like being abused, that's all. <laughs> so having these type of, uh, being in this type of position, you're actually, you have more opportunity to learn about processes and specific damage mechanisms. So like the trade-off is, like Scott said, it's going to be, probably less hours a week, like 40 hours a week, kind of like a, you know, nine to five, even though it's probably going to be like seven to five thirty, whatever, but yeah, closest to bankers. Oh, geez, that was terrible. Close to bankers hours as, uh, as we get. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, probably won't pay as much as turnarounds or claw jobs, obviously, but it's the trade off is the knowledge and Scott also said that you'll be doing a lot of maintenance repairs. So you do get to see a lot more on the run stuff, leaks and uh, other issues that come up while the plant is operating as opposed to just a, an empty semi-clean vessel that you got to cr crawl through, right? Yeah, replacing so, steam traps and exciting things like that. Stuff like that. We, <laughs> yeah. Uh, steam traps, you know, you get to kind of figure out like problem v stuff you wouldn't normally see like you wouldn't normally get to do like a valve inspection or see specific components as much on a turnaround as you would on the run. And even like types of like erosion and stuff on a downstream of a control valve or something where the piping kind of develops a pinhole or something like that. Like you get to see cool, 
cool kind of stuff like that and everyday occurrences that kind of happen in refineries and how to kind of mitigate them and repair them, I guess, even though they're usually pretty easy on piping. Yeah, different uh, disasters, I guess, if you want to call them that. Like with the turnaround, it's all planned and known to some extent. There's always um, little things you find, but you're, you know, it's, there's nothing too, too surprising. It's always... I shouldn't say that either, but it, it the bulk of it is planned. So you go in, you kind of know you're going to fix some stuff. You maybe don't know what always, but you know there's going to be a little bit here, a little bit there, and it's a kind of controlled environment in a in a window. Um, now you don't have disastrous stuff all the time either on maintenance on the run either, but you do have those other little things, you know, pinhole leaks and stuff like that. You're not going to see in a turnaround one because the the plant shut down, um, and then you'll be expecting inspecting that and ideally finding that you know right before it was about to fail or something like that Mm -hmm. that would be best case scenario right then you're repairing it before that happens so just a little bit different uh side of it i guess if you will yeah no that's pretty good and even you know you kind of get to see the back end on how the scopes are created just kind of like scott and i were doing turnaround planning uh you kind of figure out why like why are we looking between these tray levels or why are we you know, doing mag or assessing for a certain type of acidic pitting or something because we, well, you know, a few months back there was a massive pH swing in the unit and now we suspect, you know, some carryover or something, some damage may have happened in this vessel. So add it to the inspection scope and we'll inspect for it when we can get in and have a chance because it may not be accessible on the run. Yeah, and that, that is probably the biggest um advantage to a embedded job versus a you know turnaround inspector claw job or something like that is it is like like you said frank the the knowledge that you know you'll you'll get or that is at least available to you if if that's uh, something you're interested in is the the process and those damage mechanisms because you're working with the process engineers a lot you're you're interacting with operators a lot more and um, just the planning that goes into it too like um you know yeah like you said why you're putting that specific nde to it um you know, we've had this damage before, so we, we expect to see it again. So you're really getting that history. And then if you're, you know, you're fortunate enough to do the planning and the execution, where sometimes you can just be keep moving along as a planner your whole career, which, uh, you know, some people probably enjoy that. But if you're fortunate enough to do the planning and the execution, that, that makes for the best uh, inspection, if you will, because you're going to have like the wealth of knowledge of, of the history um, the, the operating conditions for, you know, at least the last year or however long you've been there. And you're going to know, you know, probably more about that equipment than even some of the, some of the unit people do, because you're just specifically working on, you know, maybe one area. So yeah. you're going in with all this knowledge and, uh, all the scope that you likely created yourself and then you're going to execute it and you know, what could go wrong, right? Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, another, uh, <clears throat> Another another bonus of the uh, embedded role is that with these, uh, say, daily occurrences, well, I guess they're not daily, but, you know, uh, on the run kind of repairs and stuff like that, you get the advantage of actually working with the QC and you get to actually do follow through. You create uh, repair plans, repair scopes. Well, I guess that's the same thing, hey? Uh, you get to interact with the contractor QC. I guess if you want to split it as far as like the owner repair scope that they create and then the QC or, or repair group comes up with their plan or ITP <laughs> or, or whatever. So, I mean, there's kind of two things, but they essentially are like matching puzzle pieces, if you will. Yeah, it's, it's stuff you wouldn't do on your claw your job <laughs> <laughs> nicely put <Yeah. laughs> you know like the, I, to get but like there are some claw jobs where you would kind of follow through with the repair scope and repair planning but normally it's it's left up to the staff of that facility uh as opposed to embedded you're acting as essentially staff at that facility and you would create those uh, repair plans and follow through with the qc go witness the hydro test if needed uh follow up on all the nde reports review and accept if required i guess if you were doing a repair the contractor qc would accept those nde reports but you would accept the final documentation and do a review of the final packages yeah you'd be doing their turnover review and that'd be things you'd be looking for right that um you know, some sort of NDE tech certified it and then, uh, you know, likely the QC person accepted it. So there's going to be those two signatures, maybe three, a helper or somebody on there too. But yeah, that's something you'll be looking for. And then you'll likely certify, uh, you know, an AB40 or whatever, whatever they got going on there. So um, yeah, that that's one of the big 
plus is a, especially for myself because that's the stuff i like is is the repairs um so with the embedded type of role you're going to be you know planning those creating those well in advance you're going to be working with the qc people uh, you know as you get a little closer to the turnaround but but still well in advance and they're going to be giving you their itps and you're going to be going back and forth with that stuff you know putting welding procedures in place and kind of having all that planned and then you get into the turnaround and then there'll be a couple of things that you know weren't planned or weren't 100 uh, percent expected so same thing you go and put a repair plan together issue to them and then they they give you their itp back and, and then you execute it inspect it sign it off close the bandway eventually and it, it's all it's all done it's that satisfying feeling and then and then you got all the post turnaround cleanup that everyone likes to do <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, maybe one thing you would possibly, it would maybe might not fall under a claw job though, but you would have an advantage more so, well, I don't want to say more so as an embedded, but where do you think doing random external inspections falls under? Even it's not really a claw job, even though you may kind of just get called out to do externals. Yeah. I don't know. That one. Embedded. Well, it's hard to say. Like when you're embedded, you, you'll get some of those. Um, just when um, you know the workload just piles up in a specific area, I guess you you could take on some of those. Um, you could even get called into a facility to to do them. Like may, some places like to just do them all and you know through the summer or whatever it is, yeah. right? And they just time them that way, and they'll just bring a contractor for a month or two. Um, some places. <laughs> like to try to get you to do them, you know, during the turnaround when everything's shut down, which you're not supposed to do, but... Makes sense. So, what do you mean? We have the yeah, manpower. Nothing's leaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah, exactly. So that, um, yeah, I don't know wh- where those fall into exactly. I guess it could kind of be anywhere. The, the thing with the, say you come in for two months to, to clean up a bunch of externals that they've let pile up for a contractor to come in and do, it's not... Um, it's not like a turnaround where you're coming in and working 12 hours a day for four weeks and then getting out of there. It's, it, it'll be more the, the 40 hour a week type of thing, clean those up, do some reports and, and that's it. And then, yeah, if you are doing the embedded thing, that, that might be just something you, you add on to whatever else you're doing, like turnaround planning or whatever. Depends how close the nearest audit is or when the ESR is due. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's just kind of stuff like it, being embedded, you will get caught, you know, it's, I think we found a new claw because if you are embedded and then another unit needs help, a smaller claw will come and grab you and pluck you to go do inspections for that unit. I think that is more like, um, <laughs> Side like claw. those, those long hooks that they use, like in the theater oh, yeah, when, sheep hook or yeah, something when you're like getting kind of booed <laughs> off stage and they just put the hook around your neck and pull you <laughs> off to the side. That's what shepherd's hook. Yeah. yeah I don't know what those are called. Yeah. Shepherd hook yeah. job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what that falls Around under. the neck, of course. Yeah. Oh, obviously, obviously yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Scott, this might be our first uh, short episode. I don't know. Is there anything else we can elaborate um, on? Th- like, did we, did we talk about like the NDE companies? Like we talked about in the claw job, so you don't have, you know, a lot to do with them or, or not very much depending on the, the degree of claw. But uh, <laughs> with the more embedded job where you've been planning and you're doing the execution, you're, you're likely going to be um, not really coordinating those people, but um, contacting their coordinator when, when you need them and, and kind of kicking off that execution. And then, and then even if not that, you're definitely going to be receiving the reports for your equipment that you've inspected. So you're going to be, you know, putting that all together and making sure that, um, you know, that 100% wet fluorescent you wanted or whatever it was got done and your shear wave or whatever it is that's all part of your inspection. It's, it's not just the visual and the report. It's, it's getting, um, you know, either coordinating that NDE or at the very least gathering the reports and making sure it's all done and just checking a box type of thing before you close it. So um, there's a lot more involvement there. And then again, with whatever IMS program they're using, right, you're likely going to be, if you've been the guy there planning and been there for a long time, you're likely going to be, um, you know, updating whatever uh, IMS software that they use you know, it could even be Excel sheets, whatever it is, but you're likely going to be updating that. Whereas, um, you know, the guys that came in just to kick off the turnaround, probably not going to let them meddle with that. It sometimes creates more problems. Yeah. They might not put it in the right format or they delete stuff. Like I, I know on the last job that we were coordinators, inspection coordinators on, there was, 
issues with some of the contractors we plucked into, you know, deleting stuff and depends on how much access I guess IT gives them, right? Yeah, and it's not fair either to um, no. bring somebody in, um, you know, as a visual inspector and then try to get them to run a, you know, very elaborate, very confusing when you don't know how to use it program. I mean, it's something that if you've used it for months and months and months, it's it's very easy and very simple to navigate. But just to get thrown into a, a program you haven't used before, and everybody has their own different ones, and people are coming out with their pri- proprietary, oh, that's a tough yeah, one, was good. type of programs too. So they all have their own different quirks and that. So it, yeah, it's not really fair to bring guys in for a turnaround and try to have them update that. Like sometimes it works better just to have them do a good job on the reports and then you're more embedded type of people or even the staff people at that point can, can do their updates. Yeah. Maybe less problems that way. Yeah. I'll well, remember this too. If you're a coordinator or someone, <laughs> s- someone high up in the control or even controlling the claw and just remember what we go through. So claw operator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, did we do it? Did we have like the first episode where we had a responsible time frame here? Yeah, we might have uh, somebody actually listen to the whole thing. The whole thing, yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> drops off after what, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> um, we're working pretty hard. We're going to try and have some uh, pretty neat guests coming up. Um, yeah, exciting stuff coming. We're trying to work on getting someone to come in and talk about uh, drone inspections and kind of the future of that. That was something we kind of got enamored with on the last job. Oh, hey. yeah. We took quite a liking to that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty neat. So Very fascinating, actually. Yeah, what they're doing with that stuff now is very cool. A lot, a lot of companies give, are giving that a bad rap, unfortunately, and don't, don't do a good job of it. But, man, some of the guys that are that are good with it and uh, do some pretty, pretty neat things, um, not just industrial inspections all kinds of mapping and oh man just very cool amazing machines actually yeah, it inspired yeah. scott and i to, to actually go buy our own drones and yeah, uh, getting practiced up <laughs> scott's had the privilege privilege of watching me crash mine so uh <laughs> pretty neat and uh i'm pretty enamored with the whole process and actually i was a hater a big hater on it before but uh i think they're pretty useful tools and uh as the technology progresses i think It'll only um, make our job easier, but also a lot cooler, I guess, as well, you know, from a geek kind of standpoint of it, because uh, <laughs> you're incorporating these awesome little bits of technology in there. Yeah, no, it's very cool. And they, they have their limitations, too. I mean, it's it's like the rope access thing. You can't you can't always do that. It has its limitations, too. So it's, you know, for everyone that's worried about getting put out of work. Donzy. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, they, they, have, they have their limitations too. But it, yeah, it's um, no, it's it's very cool, very cool technology, and it's uh, excited to see where that's going. All right, Scott, since you brought us in, maybe you can uh, sign us off with our little sign off there. <laughs> Watch out for the claw. <laughs> <laughs>